Hello, hello, and welcome everyone. I'm Ray, and today we are at part two of Anti Entropy Visual Novel. Well, last time we just kind of got to know everyone and kind of got into the situation. <laughs> well, Welt was kind of just experimented on, but then he came to a different kind of a lab, and there he met Einstein and Tesla. <laughs> he also already gave Einstein a nickname called Eins. And yeah, today we are going to see where it takes us. Honestly, because I've read some other mangas already, right? I'm really curious where this will take us. Because I have no idea how, how this lab with Einstein, Tesla and Welt is going to um, become a little different. <laughs> I have no idea how that will happen and I'm really, really curious to see that. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so here we are. This should be the start of chapter 3, so let's honestly take a look. I have no idea where we left off. Did we do something? <laughs> mm. Compared to the tidy and orderly ground floor, the private space on the top floor is quite simply hell on earth. Right, we were about to wake up Tesla because Einstein got a letter, which was kind of important and kind of a big deal. So let's take a look. So <laughs> Tesla doesn't like to tidy up or is it just both of them? A few minutes ago, Welt would never have predicted that, the, that he would find these items outside a girl's bedroom. Pizza boxes piled together like Jenga, <laughs> waste paper piled into bins and forming into trash heaps the size of small mountains. Bras, undergarments, stockings, hang drying everywhere. <laughs> Mysterious electronic devices discarded and tossed against the corner, their surfaces covered with dust. It's hard to imagine how, but perhaps because the cleaners won't come upstairs, everything has now turned into this hair-raising spectacle. <laughs> I mean, that's what you kind of expect from science, from like those crazy, crazy scientists, right? Now, if there is the tiniest, most remote possibility that this scene is actually typical for private residences of countless single ladies everywhere, God knows how many gentlemen will be left shell-shocked and heartbroken. <laughs> At least right now, Welt is searching for room 203 with a heavy heart. Knock knock. <laughs> okay, it's knocking, that's good. Somewhat surprisingly, the door opened rather quickly. No, that was the sound of a door locking. <laughs> Dr. Tesla, I do not come upstairs willingly. Huh? Are you trying to say you're sleepwalking, Assistant Welt? From the other side of the door transmits a grumpy and energetic voice. No doubt it's the real deal. None other than Tesla herself. No, no, no I'm not! Ugh. I mean, it was Dr. Einstein who asked me to come and wake you up. I wasn't asleep. Um, okay then. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to take the next flight to America. What? Wait? To where? To America. Now. Yes. America. As in the United States of America. Correct. Western USA, Montana. Have you gone mad? I don't understand the situation either. It was just that the short sleeves, no glasses, no the, the fin. <laughs> okay, I love belt here, okay. No, the Finn showed her a strange letter, then she immediately became all serious about it. What the heck? Um, the letter said something about finding some ancient pastimes. Uh, and some words I didn't recognize. Ah, that's right, the sender's name was... Sh Someone called Sh... What was it? It's Schrödinger. Yeah, yeah, yes, Sch Schrödinger. It was from Schrödinger. Plank that old hag once again using her own students to pick up fresh meat. Huh? You don't need to know? Um. 
I feel like Belt right now, like, just like, what is it? What? Why are you? What? What? <laughs> Clearly, she's mine. Clearly, so's Lab 42. Clearly, the topic is beginning to sound a bit too dangerous. So, Belt standing outside the door can only cover his ears and keep mute as a mouse. <laughs> but the dreadful ringing and chattering clattering of her shrill voice continues incessantly, piercing through the door into his eardrum. That sounds like horror. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wait, what is that? The poor young man had fallen onto a pile of pizza boxes and is now sprawled out on his back, eyes glazed, mouth, ag mouth agape. The door had swung open without warning, startling Welt, who unfortunately backpedaled onto the pizza boxes and without much force slipped and fell. <laughs> but that is not the most important thing. Ah, uh, you pest. Did your fall give you brain damage as well? Move aside. She's cute. Oh, she's so cute with her hair down. Okay, she, she can wear her, her hair down all the time if you ask me. <laughs> Dr. Tesla, it's not yet summer outside. Huh? What are you talking about? I mean that you... You... you you what? You stuttering fool! Move! You're wearing only a nightgown right now, aren't you? <laughs> and with a muffled sound, Welt's Welt world comes crashing down, instantly transforming into a sea of white. Oh, I love that. <laughs> it's way too funny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Belt is seated in the front row of a temporarily borrowed Volkswagen Beetle alongside the driver, the Finn, with the gold-rimmed glasses. Belt lightly touches his head. Sure enough, it now sports a bump. But having said that, my life is still intact. Perhaps that alone is worth a three-day holiday. <laughs> oh, cute! Yes, more artwork. Squinting at the back seat through the rear view mirror, Velt spies the source of his suffering, using her compact mirror to calmly draw on her lipstick. <laughs> Perfect. Velt can't understand how such a person is capable of tossing her own living space into a complete shambles. It's even messier than Einstein's hairdo next to her. <laughs> and in a hurry she had almost forgotten to change her clothes before they departed. <laughs> that would be really funny if she would sit here now <laughs> with her nightgown. But perhaps more difficult to understand is this. Where did she find that light billowing shawl and fine one-piece dress? Not a single wrinkle on it. Anyone who has seen those Jenga stacks of pizza boxes would be certain that this girl must have a four-dimensional wardrobe. No, it should be the other way around. Whoever seen this lovely cute girl before me would never believe that she in fact lives in a pixie, right? <laughs> Belt is really, really sassy. <laughs> The young woman in question, who now appears rather neat and fresh on the surface, begins to put away her mirror. Veld hurriedly averts his gaze. Out of the corner of his eyes, he notices the corners of the Finn's mouth curl briefly into a sly smile. <laughs> Veld is just like, no. <laughs> Stick to driving the car. <laughs> hey. Just as Veld was beginning to feel miserable, Einstein hands him a document wallet from the back seat. Is this for me? Belle takes the paper wallet. Inside there appears to be several small hard-bound booklets. Mm-hmm. Open it and have a look. You'll need them later. One of the booklets is a passport. The wallet also contains a work permit of the Imperial Institute and some documents to guarantee movement through immigration. Belle Joyce? Printed on the passport is one such name. Half familiar, half foreign. Ah, Joyce is a sure name, taken from an author. Do you know Ulysses? Ulysses? You mean the Latin name for Odysseus? No. Well, I shouldn't have expected you to know that. Just pretend I never asked. Anyway, make sure you remember the name she gave you, and avoid giving yourself away in front of customs. Well, I don't know what she means either, I'm sorry, I'm not that smart. <laughs> Giving myself away? Wait, is this document forged? <laughs> After all, the name Welt was just made up by Einstein not that long ago. Well, it depends on how you look at it. 
Just pretend it's an official certificate issued by a civilian without explicit permission. What kind of justification is that? Look, it's something we can't reveal. But if you start acting all weird, our righteous friends of justice from Scotland Yard will start investigating and asking difficult questions and I do not particular, pic, particular, particularly welcome that idea. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Isn't Scotland Yard a criminal police organization, not the home office? Gosh, how could an amnesiac like you remember something as obscure as that? Who planted such ideas in your head? I just mean the police, okay? Any police. Um, relax. Just remember your name and you'll be fine. Einstein has such a... She, 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 <laughs> she makes everyone calm. I mean, that's just for me right now, but... I imagine her to be someone really, really calm. Mm-hmm. Ah! What now? None of your damn business. Hey, hey, Finn, what did you do with your son? Son? For a brief moment, Veld was unable to parse the exact meaning of this word in his brain. Oh, really? It's fine. I've already called his school. It's not the first time Joachim has been put in such a situation. He'll be okay. Why do these names sound, like, not English? <laughs> I thought they were in London. Well, maybe maybe I just don't know that they have the name as well. Seems like that's the name of the Finn's son. Wait. Son? So in other words, Mr. Gold-rimmed glasses here, he has a son who is already attending school? What are you doing blanking out again, you blockhead? Hurry up and memorize your name. With a karate chop, Twintail strikes Veil's head at the exact spot where the lump is growing. Ow, that hurts. Most certainly a deliberate and targeted maneuver. Uh, uh, ow. You, how could you be sure I wasn't busy doing that just now? <laughs> Idiot. You're obviously envious of Finn the family man, right? Ugh. Miss Young. Huh? Henrietta Young, a young <laughs> Henrietta Young, a young and promising archaeologist, a beauty of mixed German Chinese heritage. She's the Finn's wife, however, she is also a very busy lady who can only be at home for around ten days a year. Oh my god. How about you also try raising a child by yourself? Oh <laughs> uh, Actually, everything's gotten much better after we started going to school. Anyway, my wife's work is valuable and deserving of our support. Whatever, your top priority now is to memorize your name and your surname. Every single letter. Don't you dare think about anything else. There'll be, there'll be plenty of time to do that on the plane. Twintails grips the back of Vale's collar and fiercely exhorts him with those menacing words before purposely, purposefully turning towards the mop-haired girl seated next to her. <laughs> I think I have to I have to learn reading again. I mean, that's, that's a good, uh, good way to learn again, right? <laughs> but that said, is it still that hard to get anyone to do anything with me? Even if it's in such a boring place as an airplane? Wait, what? Wait. What now? Last time you didn't play with me and instead read a book all by yourself. As if your time is simply too precious to keep me company. <laughs> She's not having that, right? Moped stares expressionlessly into Twin Tail's eyes. This time we're sharing a double room. Wow! Really, really? No single rooms this time? <laughs> That's fantastic! I love you, Lisa. Love you to death! Please just don't mention death. I'm really scared. But only if you promise to dress properly after drinking alcohol and taking your bath. Huh? <laughs> oh. S such a tease. How could that possibly be true? <laughs> Wait, so what I saw before was really... <laughs> Whoa! Before the poor young man in the front seat could react, he was already clutching his head, groaning and falling back into his seat. Veld, shut your trap! Okay, this is this is like a family trip and I am totally here for this. 
Okay, the first leg from London to New York, eight hours. Then transfer to a flight to Chicago, two hours. Then the final leg to Billings, another two hours. This does not include time spent waiting to board or change flights, which will be considerable despite the fact that they are VIPs. With the expectation of such a long journey, the roar of the jet engine is even more sleep-inducing than usual. Especially when the scenery outside the window is an endless monotony of vast ocean. So even when, when Welt is awoken by an urge to pass urine, for a while he hesitated to leave his seat. He lifts the right arm of the lightly snoring twin tails that had been draped across his body. <laughs> and he helps the Finn on the other side of the ale pick up his glasses that had fallen to... Damn it. That had fallen to the floor. Only... Only after stepping into the ale does Welt notice that, among the travelers sleeping left and right, Einstein is still awake, sitting by a window and reading a book in the light. It seems that every now and then she is also jotting or scribbling something into her notebook. I'm going to the restroom for a while. Understood. The messy-haired girl wrote on a slip of paper and held it up with her hand. Is she reminding him not to disturb other people's sleep? I mean, thoughtful. Feeling embarrassed, the young man decides to get on with it and move towards the restroom. At this moment, no one is waiting in the queue, so Welt is quickly able to address his particular physiological need. Oh, <gasps> I can decide. Oh, that's cool. Maybe I should continue sleeping to get rid of this jet lag. Why isn't Eins taking a break? Um, no, let's let's think or and talk to Eins. Not taking a break? Yes, we are writing as well. That's cute. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Well, decided to hand her back a note. I'm just reading something quite interesting. It is written on the note passed back to him. Cute! They are passing notes back and forth. <laughs> the temperature in the cabin becomes a little cold and the young man cannot decide whether he should put on a coat. Naturally, Twintails is still sleeping blissfully between the two of them. What is it? Riemann conjecture. Maybe, I don't know. Math problem? Oh gosh, that's not... Oh. All non-trivial trivial zeros of the analytic continuation are on the line... Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, whatever. <laughs> Absolutely no idea. Not surprising. And people who lack knowledge of complex functions will find it hard to understand. You only need to know that it can be considered the holy grail of the entire mathema mathematical community. Yeah, I'm, I'm the worst at math. So... That's that. Holy grail! For example, if it holds true from the generalized Riemann conjecture, Goldbach's conjecture, conjecture can be easily proven. Do you know what Goldbach's conjecture is? No, I don't. Any odd number greater than 5 can be expressed as the sum of 3 primes. Any even number greater than 2 can be expressed as the sum of 2 primes. All in all, sounds impressive. Do you want to solve these conjectures? No, I don't. They are completely beyond my capabilities. Moreover, my main business is not mathematics. It's just that Riemann had a great influence on me, that's all. Was he your math teacher? <laughs> you could say so. He certainly didn't know me, and it was impossible for him to know that my general theory of rel relativity was based on his Riemannian manifolds. After all, he was a he was a historical figure from more than a hundred years ago. He was dead by the time my grandpa was born. It takes the young man a while to digest the general meaning of that statement. He decides to ask a question that may be a little easier for her to explain. If only so that he can continue following the conversation. <laughs> I feel that. I really do. <laughs> Especially while a certain twin tails remains asleep. General relativity? In simple terms, it is a theory that universal gravitation is equivalent to the distortion of time and space. Is there a metaphor or image I can imagine? You must have seen a whirlpool before. 
Imagine a wooden ball falling into the whirlpool. Does it look like it is sucked into the hole in the center? Yes. Do you mean that gravity is also an illusion like this? We know that for the wooden ball, the twisting water surface is the direct cause of its spiral motion. The same is true for a planet. Any objective, any object will rely on its own mass to distort the space and time they are in, forming a vortex that attracts other objects. Gravity is just a manifestation of this distortion. That's, that's a cool way to explain it, actually. This feels like some kind of philosophy. <laughs> Physical theory without mathematical notation is philosophy. That's why Sir Newton's masterpiece is called The Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. I haven't read that book. You won't find it easy to understand. The mathematical notation of that era is itself indecipherable for most modern readers. Indecipherable? Speaking of which, what was that weird text in Schrödinger's letter that I couldn't understand? A name. Oh, that was a name? The name of an information processing device from 50,000 years ago, what? The content of this sentence is so unexpected that Welt remains, remains perplexed for a while. What? The other party simply draws a line silently under the words information processing device. So, what is an information processing device? Imagine a librarian made of machinery, or a library with automatic automatons as its administrators. Wait, could they be talking about the the void archives? Is that too far-fetched? It's just because she says library, I'm sorry. Automatic machinery 50,000 years ago? From your perspective, just treat it as a cliffhanger, a taste of things to come. <laughs> Smiley face. Oh, you're such a tease. Please tell me now. Too much trouble. Please. Someone will tell you in due course. Someone whom I reckon will not be afraid of this inconvenience. So please spare me the trouble. Smiley face. <laughs> wow, Eins is so mean. Sad smiley face. Of course I am. P.S. Now that I think of it, I find your tone pathetic. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> okay. The young man had no choice but to stick out his tongue. The girl responds in kind. While doing so, she also takes the note back from him. Let's use this opportunity to attend math class. Please, no, 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 everything but math. Are you serious? Of course. Do you know how to prove? I'm not reading this because I, I have no idea how to read mathematical stuff in English, so I'm sorry for that, but no. <laughs> how could I know? Oh. Should we start with the fundamental theorem of calculus? No. Since I need to teach you, maybe it's better to start by learning Dedekind cuts? Ah, at this point I think we're better off just starting from the very basics with that set theory. Can I choose to sleep? I am built right now. <laughs> I love Eins, but she can she can do all of that by herself. I'm not I'm not no. Mm -mm. <laughs> Okay, then I can read more books by myself. Smiley face. <laughs> That's so cute. She's playful, but in a really calm manner. And as she passes the note, the girl sticks out her tongue with an even more innocent expression. It is as if she is saying, Want to chat with me? You're a hundred years behind. <laughs> that is true, unfortunately. But I love it. It's so fun. Okay, guys, we are at the airport. <laughs> New York International Airport. Due to the flight spanning 5 times 0, Welt can still see the afterglow of a setting sun here, even though it has been 10 hours since launch. Oh, <laughs> a man in black? I'm more interested in the woman, I'm sorry. Dr. Einstein, Dr. Tesla. Two strangers suddenly interrupt Welt's rev reverie. Excuse me, who might you two be? The Finn stands vigilantly in front of the two ladies. Wait. Um, I don't want to be... <laughs> I don't want to say anything. But I don't see two ladies. I mean, honestly, what do I know? <laughs> Dr. Einstein, we should have met before. This middle-aged man has a deep voice. Welt feels as though he, too, has heard this voice before. Oh. 
What can I do for you? The mop head girl responds emotionlessly, as if they had never been acquainted. The old man hopes this will be of help to you. The middle-aged man takes a scroll case from his leather briefcase and hands it to the Finn. You are an expert in ancient manuscripts, right? For the time being. Then you should recognize this. Hmm? The Finn opens the wooden box dubiously and pulls out a tattered piece of parchment that appears to have only been recently restored. Aramaic? 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 Judgment Day. Sacrifice. Song. Okay. This verse... Could this be the Dead Sea Scrolls? <laughs> Indeed, you recognize it. Not bad. This is part of the scroll that has never been released publicly. I hope that the secrets within will be useful to your research. So, the Overseer. What exactly does he need us to do? Gosh, she is really wearing a pretty dress. Nothing. The old man just hopes to give Lab 42 a hand in their research, that is all. In other words, he has high expectations for our research this time, yes? Of course. He looks forward to reading your thesis. Okay, okay, I understand. The point of our activities here is to not let the North American branch monop monopolize the results, right? To most of people and mobilize resources for such trivial reasons. Relations between the European and North American branches must be quite sour indeed. <laughs> oh, okay. Ah, yes, here's a souvenir. Please kindly accept. The middle-aged man no longer pays any attention to Tesla, but instead takes out a box of, of luxurious-looking chocolate from his leather briefcase and hands it to Einstein. Well, see you next time. Huh, okay. So, interesting. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out where this fits <laughs> in the world building from everything we know already. <clears throat> <laughs> that man liked to talk around the point, but I could tell that they still have that same old authori authoritarian streak. After all, the tail cannot be allowed to wag the dog and tree trunk. Oh wow, that's a long text. And a tree trunk must remain strong while its branches remain light. Now that a new branch finally prospers, they have come to fear it, and so they turn against it faster than turning the pages of a book. Interesting. <laughs> she doesn't care. Einstein remains non-committal in her non-response and silently peels away the wrapping paper from a piece of chocolate. Hey, I'm speaking to you, mophead. Just a box of chocolate is enough to win you over? If I don't eat it, Mr. Cocoa Farmer will be upset. <laughs> Are you even listening to me? <laughs> okay, but that's... Oh, gosh. That's so interesting and so cute at the same time. But we are getting into the stuff. I just feel like it's a little better wrapped. Just like, just like the chocolate, you know? <laughs> New chapter. Oh god, I'm s I, I cannot contain myself. I'm so curious how this belt becomes... Or I mean not becomes, but... Ah, mm, you know the other mangas? <sighs> I'm interested to see why everything happens the way it does. I'm really, really curious. <laughs> I'm, I'm the most curious about the belt. Honestly, for now. So how did the situation end up like this? Val takes a furious sip of cola while warily watching the Finn, who is carrying shopping bags of all shapes and sizes. The girls have gone to a lingerie store and the young man had no choice but to pull away with the only other male and make small talk outside. Yes, the other man, who was about to follow the girls and swagger inside the store himself. Does shopping really ever need a reason? Unperturbed, the short-sleeved man spreads out both hands in a frivolous gesture. Not to mention, the duty-free stores here are indeed cheaper than in London. This guy is really good at carrying bags. Even with his ridiculous posture, still they do not fall to the ground. <laughs> Can it be that he had frequently played such a role in the past? Isn't his wife some archaeologist who is often, often away from home? Women are indeed such terrifying creatures. <laughs> Oh, I mean, not wrong because humans are. 
So is this the reason that Dr. Tessa lives paycheck to paycheck? You are half right. To be honest, she has also been indulging in mail shopping recently, and I've heard she has brought many she has bought many useless things. It must be really hard for Dr. Einstein to deal with that. <laughs> You've got it completely wrong. Huh? Don't you think that things are more fun and interesting in life precisely because of people like Tesla? <laughs> he doesn't. <clears throat> Don't look down on the girls, yeah for real. If you're too rigid, you may never find your other half in the future, eh? Mind your own business. <laughs> Cold and gloomy on the outside, hot and spicy on the inside. How quaint, if you wish to be even more sombre. <laughs> Perhaps in the future you can follow in the footsteps of Humphrey Bogart? I mean, like Rick Blaine in Casablanca. I'm question marks as well. Ah, you haven't seen the film, have you? Perhaps next time we're back at Lab 42, I'll show it to you? <laughs> Look, basically, a good man should have a clear idea of his strengths. Mr. Goldrim Glasses gestures with an OK sign and rounds off the topic before Veld could get in another word. <laughs> he's, he, he's just done with everything and everyone. Uh, I do have something I've been concerned about for a while now. Veld tries to dispel his negative impression of the Finn and begins to steer the subject of conversation to one of his own liking. Oh? Is it about the organization? Or is it about something we're going to investigate? It seems he won't refuse any topic. Um, I do care about those two issues, but what I wish to ask you is neither of those things. Oh, I have... I want to I want to guess, because my thought is... Well, Veid still doesn't know what a son is. Maybe? Maybe that's what he's going to ask. You wish to pose a question spe specifically to me? The look of Mr. Goldrim glasses betrays a hint of surprise. He seems to waver ever so slightly. Um, it's just that... No need to dilly-dally about. Neither doctor has a boyfriend yet, okay? <laughs> I mean, that's a good info, right? Nobody asked you that. Since you were saying absolutely nothing, all I could do was guess blindly. Mr. Goldrim glasses shrugs his shoulders in an exaggerated manner. Eight body measurements, preferred taste and fashion, inside and out. Wait, what? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Mr. Goldrim Glasses let out a suggestive laugh. I think it's best to wait for them to give you the answers themselves, yeah? Hey! Please don't show me that expression. I'm not poking fun at you on purpose. I simply don't know the answers myself. <laughs> But you see, with such private and personal details, if by any chance you ask them without thinking it through... Finn makes a beheading gesture while keeping his grip on the papers. Paper bags. You're nuts. You don't say. But when I met my future wife for the first time, I stupidly asked her a question. Isn't it a bit silly for you to still be wearing bloomers at your age? And then I was beaten to a pulp. <laughs> That was quite an intense and healthy beating, I tell you. Healthy beating? Okay. No one else is responsible for your own madness but yourself. But to be honest, if someday you meet a 30-year-old girl who still enjoys wearing bloomers, don't give up on this opportunity of a lifetime. <laughs> alright, alright, gotcha. <laughs> I mean it. If she happens to be a Finn, especially one who likes, uh... Yevan Polka, you can even invite her to a sauna. By the way, my full name is Elias O. Oh, no Nokian Virtanen? Nokian Virtanen? I don't know. An authentic Finn. Yeah, I knew he wasn't called Finn. <laughs> His name is Elias or Elias, okay. <laughs> but this was like, wait, what? Traditionally, everyone in the sauna room has to be completely frank and open with each other. You get what I mean? <laughs> I think he, he just completely tuned out of this conversation. Why do I feel like you're desperately promoting saunas to me just now? Oh? I thought since it's a question you wanted to ask me specifically, it must be related to something I'm very familiar with. Give me a break, I barely know or want to know anything about the sauna business of yours. Oh? Isn't it the only cultural export from my beloved Finland that has gained worldwide popularity? 
Well, the questions I want to ask have nothing to do with Finland. As a result, when the two doctors finally emerged from the laundry store, Val still had not yet acquired about any of their personal hobbies or habits. Wait, you really wanted to know that? All oh, right, he wanted to ask Eins before, but she assumed something else and then he did not ask. True, that did happen. <laughs> oh, cute. Really cute. When the group finally boarded the flight to Chicago, Einstein had already changed into a set of newly purchased clothes. A furred shawl coat resembling a ferret and an overflowing dress lay at tier upon tier, resembling a cream cake. It is said to be a Victorian era debutante dress. It is difficult to describe, but the dress worn on her body gives off a strange and incongruous vibe, especially given that she is now sleeping, reclined on a seat with that book. With that book about Riemann plastered upside down on her face. Needless to say, this could have only been the result of Tesla's personal fashion sense. <laughs> Also needless to say, that this could have only been the result of Tesla's own wallet. And finally, it goes without saying that people like Tesla could never be caught reading professional or technical literature on a plane. Probably true, <laughs> true. But just because she doesn't want, want to work when she could do other things, right? I mean, like on the plane. <laughs> oh god. Let's play cards! The fashionable red-haired Twin Tails announces. Why doesn't she wear that doll-like dress herself? Three people is a bit awkward though. It seems that the Finn has already started to seriously weigh up their options. Three, missing one. Mr. Goldwyn Glasses is definitely the type who likes to play bridge. Nothing awkward at all, since we're already in America. How can we not play Texas Hold'em? Ah, Texas Hold'em poker. But do we have enough loose change? Stop speaking nonsense, Finn. Don't we have this? The red-haired twin tails howls loudly, with ill regard of the other passengers, and pulls out that box of chocolates from Einstein's bag. That's hers, though! <laughs> Pulling chocolate balls and coins together as gambling chips. You really are a child. Did you know? Once upon a time, chocolate was considered as precious as gold. As early as the time of the Aztec Empire, cocoa beans had already become an important strategic resource, being used as currency. Oh. And after the landings at Normandy, the chocolate ration to the US soldiers became something of a hard currency on the Western Front. Everything you could imagine could be bought with chocolate. Um, modern chocolate is produced by some kind of special crystallization technology, which can preserve its hardness and taste at the same time. That is why chocolate, once melted, will taste worse when it is frozen. It fundamentally changes everything at the molecular level. Interesting, I didn't know that. That's that's cool fun facts. <laughs> oh. Anyway, we should be thankful for today's industrial civilization, for making it possible for us to follow our hearts' desires and eat as heartily as we please. Amen. Excuse me? Yes, Assistant Welt. What is your question? You have permission to ask. This Texas Hold'em you mentioned. I don't know how to play it. What's the matter? It's not that how you catch on as soon as you play. Um, gosh, have you never heard of fake it till you make it? How can you give such a long-winded explanation of the origins of chocolate? Yet when it comes to... Welt mumbles at the volume only he himself can hear. <laughs> yeah, that's probably better for your, your help. What, do you have some dissatisfaction with me, a doctor? <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't dare. It's not real gambling after all. Even if it were a real gamble, I would have nothing to lose anyway. As he reaches this line of thought, Vel decides to harden his resolve and bite the bullet. I like this. Fold. Fold. What? Wait! Tesla fiercely snatches the two cards from the top of the discard pile and forcibly shoves them back into Vel's hand. hand. No, fold! Wait, that's... that's not... <laughs> Tesla? <laughs> Um, why? No particular reason, just no consecutive folds! That is not a rule, right? I mean, I don't know the rules, but that is not a rule, right? <laughs> but... <laughs> How can you be so tight with a beginner's hand? 
You're only playing when you see a face card or a pair. Otherwise, you just pass, pass, pass like your brain dead. How is that any fun at all? Assistant Welt, do you know what the biggest problem with gambling is? Uh, losing money? Welt looks at the empty spot that is the depleted earnings of the young doctor. <laughs> I love this so much, it's way too fun. No, 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 for people like you, it's caring too much about your winnings and losing all sense of fun with the game itself. I really don't think gambling is just about having fun. Uh, <laughs> Tesla, that's not, that's not, that's not good. Look at you, always so conservative, always hesitating, always cowering, always stuttering. Are you even a man, you... God does not play dice. A familiar, inorganic voice transmits from beneath that dreaming book. It seems that Tesla's loud voice has finally stirred Einstein's from her dreams. Y you awake? Even without looking at Tesla, Belt can still feel the blush on her face. Don't worry. The upside down Riemann is casually tossed to a corner. I will join as well. Oh! Eh? Chocolate. The girl whose hair looks even more messy than before ignores the other's astonishment and reaches out with her hand. Twin Tail snatches several gambling chips from the two gentlemen and hands them to her. <laughs> Just then, didn't you say God does not play dice or something? Wait, you are indeed correct. The girl quickly stripes, strips off the wrapping paper from one piece of chocolate. God does not play dice. But God does eat chocolate. <laughs> You sure about that? <laughs> By the time the airplane finally landed in Billings, Montana, the sun had already set for a while. In fact, if it weren't for the difference in time zone and location, they should probably see a bright and splendid morning sun hovering above London right now. Well, if the London haze isn't so heavy this time around. Billings is a small city, and coupled with the fact that it is currently off-season for tourism, there seem to be barely any people in the otherwise large terminal. But perhaps because of this, once someone starts up a greeting or says hello, it is clearly audible at a distance of a hundred meters or more. Oh! That's definitely a character because she looks different. <laughs> Einstein, Tesla! A tall, lithe woman with waist-length hair greets them loudly from a distance. She's so pretty. That green hair and golden eyes? That's... that's pretty. Oh! Okay, she's cute. Next to the sisterly woman is a young girl dressed in a down jacket with a single corkscrew ponytail and an expressionless face, waving her hand in a perfunctory excuse for a greeting. That's interesting style that this character has. Sure enough, the old hag is also here. Tesla is biting on her nails with some degree of resentment. The tall woman is Professor Blank, my doctoral, super my doctoral supervisor and the nominal head of the North American branch. Oh, okay. It seems that the other girl must be Schrödinger, the one who sent the mysterious letter. She seems to be about the same age as Tesla. Is she also a doctor? Also, what does nominal mean? Can it be that there is some other boss behind the curtain? Oh. Hey, 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 my baby lizard is so cute in that dress. You've grown a little taller, yeah? <laughs> oh, they really drew this. Oh, that's so cute. I love this. Oh, adorable. While Welt is still in the middle of reflecting on Einstein's words, the girl is suddenly pulled by Professor Blank into a tight, tight embrace. embrace. Wow. Perhaps because her face is suddenly buried deep within the considerable bosom of the other woman, Moped lets out a sad noise that sounds much like she is being smothered or suffocated. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> oh, she is just really jealous, isn't she? It's unfortunately very cold in Montana. My little lieblings, have you brought enough warm clothing? They really like German words, huh? I would I would translate this with darlings, I guess. Hmm, <laughs> you don't need to remind me. Tesla gives Blank a sour look. As for you, aren't you afraid of murdering your most beloved student even as we speak? <laughs> oh, she's so all over the place. 
Ara, ara, meine Güte. One is inclined to believe that baby Lisa is quite enjoying herself. She is really mixing a lot of languages, huh? My goodness, uh, my goodness, by the way. <laughs> the long-haired sister relaxes her arms ever so slightly, and as Einstein's forehead squeezes out from her bosom, she gives her a light kiss. She is fuming. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Tesla blows her top, exploding in a fury rage. What's wrong? Aren't we all girls? The big sister throws a wink at the girl wrapped on her left arm while bringing her right index finger to her lips. <coughs> the poor moped can only give a muted response as she has not yet recovered from the shock of the assault. <laughs> oh dearie me. The Finn smiles as usual, but the Welt can now clearly read that his utterance of shock was closer in meaning to this scene happened exactly the way I had expected it to. <laughs> Greetings to the two of you. I am Dr. Elias Nokian... Well, why is his name so long? Elias Nokian Vertanen. That's what I will go with now, but that's probably not how you say it. A scholar in ancient manuscripts. This is Welt Joyce, our research assistant. Ah, and I'm sure Dr. Tesla needs no formal introduction, am I right? It turns out that this person is also a doctor. It looks like it's really hard to find a proper job to... <laughs> what? <laughs> An expert in ancient writing? That would certainly be most helpful to us. Professor Blank finally releases poor Einstein from her grip. She takes a long, seemingly earnest look, look up and down at the fin, but then her eyes turn to rest upon Welt. Research assistant. Um, nominally speaking, yes. Being scrutinized with an unnerving gaze by the strange older woman, Welt felt a chill run down his back. The specific details involve a confidential agreement with the European branch. Professor, you need now not bother to ask. A thousand thanks to you, Einstein. You're my guardian angel. Long live Einstein. <laughs> really? Even when the North American branch always tells you everything we know without reservation? It is not clear she is trying to tease her student, but the sisterly professor appears to be deliberately putting on an anxious and sullen expression. <laughs> Cute. Well then, teacher, your three measurements and your age, please. <laughs> Neither does Miss Moped pull back on her punches. 94, 62, 92. 17 years old, 70 years ago. <laughs> oh, I like that response. Okay. I have a huge crush on her. On Plank. She is... She's something. Einstein's finally learned to care about her teacher's well-being. So happy. Sisterly professor proudly makes a hard gesture with her hands. <laughs> oh. Oh gosh. Okay. Ara, did I say something strange? Surely you're joking, Miss Plank. I say... Amidst the awkward atmosphere, it's Schrödinger. Schrödinger. The only person who had not uttered a word before who breaks the silence. Let us first decide what to eat for dinner, then we can continue our conversation. With a poker face, she waves her right hand like a Japanese fortune cat, motioning them forward. Oh, I can totally imagine that. Oh, that's adorable. Oh, what is this? In a tavern near the airport, Twin Tails blinks at a blade of fried meatballs on the dining table. Rocky Mountain Oysters. Oh, she looks even prettier like this. Oh god. Um, mm. <laughs> the mischievous big sister introduces them with a smile. No, really, I have a huge crush. <laughs> oh. For some reason, the girl with the single corkscrew ponytail sighs helplessly. The professor, she prefers to eat these, but I don't know if you lot can ever get used to them. Aren't these just oysters? It's not something I haven't already had before. That said, these do seem a little strange. Twin Tails takes a fork, prods disapprovingly at a piece, then carefully places it in her mouth as though she were eating dessert. Well, uh, although she had already felt something fishy when her fork pierced the meatball, it was only after it entered her mouth that she really began to feel... 
So she really began to feel her heart thump and palpitate with anxiety. <laughs> oh god. The rubbery elastic texture is completely unlike the rich, complex flavor she'd expect from good seafood. This is definitely not some oyster. Oh god. But then it is also unlike any other chicken, beef, liver or heart she had ever tasted. So what the hell is this? The meatballs aren't exactly unpal unpalatable, but even then, doubt begins to etch itself onto Dr. Tesla's face. The Rocky Mountain Oyster is an affectionate nickname. After seeing that she had swallowed the meatball completely, Professor Blank begins to explain without a moment's hesitation. Oh, she is so... I love her. <clears throat> As you see, this area is mountainous. During a time when technology for food preservation wasn't that well developed, there was no way for the cowboys here to eat real oysters. So these morsels that people from a coastal region would otherwise rarely ever eat, they decided to call them oysters. Half out of consolation, half out of amusement. I, I have no idea what that even is, I'm sorry. In everyday life we have a lot of names for these things. However, if you want to be accurate, in a biological sense, we'd call them testicles. Alright! <laughs> what? Twin Tails simply cannot believe her ears. Testicles. Professor Plank repeats with a smile. <laughs> Alright. These are testicles taken from young bulls. Oh god, no, I would, I would never, mm, no. But <laughs> I love that she just pranked her, basically. That's... Oh god. Poor Tesla. <laughs> At the same table, Einstein and Schrödinger shrug, shrug helplessly. Welt and the Finn both hold riveted gazes at the forks in their hands, wondering what to do with the fried meatballs that had been hovering so closely to their gaping mouth. <laughs> oh god. Indeed, as for poor Tesla, her face has turned completely green, yeah. Quite literally. <laughs> that, was, that was perfect. Within the confines of a tavern, it is easy for people to ignore any change occurring in the outside world, in every sense of that term. By the time Welt and his party had eaten and drunk to their heart's content, settled their bills and checked out, Snow was already falling outside, having begun some time prior. There is not a trace of moonlight in the night sky. Instead, snowflakes swirl and float down gently under the tangerine street lines, reflecting the shimmering brilliance of the starry sky, as if it were all some illusionary, illusory dream. Ah, That's kind of really cute. Carrying a drunk as a skunk Tesla on his back, Veld laboriously lifts his head and looks up at the night sky. So, this is snow. I don't remember seeing it myself. And I don't know why, yet I feel a sense of nostalgia. Déjà vu. Einstein opens up an umbrella and falls into step beside him. Um, pardon? A hallucinatory memory. I don't think you've ever seen snow before. It may just be that your hippocampus is overstimulated at this moment. Um... There are times the human brain sometimes deceives itself. But your emotions may be sincere, but their origins may be fake. Sorry, it seems I've ruined the moment. No, I sort of like it when someone says something aimlessly like that. So casually and without a care in the world. At least it's more interesting than not saying a word. <laughs> ah, it seems you two have quite a good relationship. The long-haired big sister had managed to catch up from behind some time ago, without anyone noticing. Professor, elders shouldn't interrupt when young people are talking to each other. <laughs> boo hoo hoo Baby Lucio, Lisa is so cruel. Plank weeps in a faint, faint and exaggerated manner. Now big sister is truly heartbroken. I had even planned to tell you some good news. <laughs> She is so calling herself Onesan. I love her. <laughs> Professor, 
It is silly to pretend to be cute with less than wholesome intentions. Hmm, I am honestly trying to be kind. All of you must be prepared for nighttime raids. Wait, what? The twice 17 year old girl suddenly puts on a pose, much like a model in an advertisement, and mimes a gesture of firing shots at their chests. Huh? Oh, those winter outfits are so cute and adorable. The poor young man is clearly taken aback by the words nighttime raid. Einstein has no particular interest in stargazing. Oh, <laughs> wait, that's what she meant? With this statement, Moped nails the true meaning of the so called nighttime raid. The two women seem to be familiar with each other's mannerisms, as if they were family. Uh huh. When you get back to downtown London, you won't be able to see the stars even if you want to. Hmm. Humming and hawing. Are you torn between two minds? The long haired big sister wags her index finger provocatively. Provocatively. But you'll have to sleep well tonight. Everyone needs to get up early tomorrow to travel to the site. So pedantic. You're the one who raised the idea of nighttime raid in the first place. Of course. Us elders always tend to be a bit more pedantic. Suddenly, for some reason, Plank raises her head, gazing over Einstein's head to stare at Welt. Don't you agree? Uh, huh? Liesel is such a lovely girl. As an older brother, you should not bully her, yeah? Hey, brother? Ara ara, guess I was wrong. <laughs> she with her ara ara. <laughs> Long haired big sister responds pretentiously, as though she had already anticipated his response. Fair enough, in that case, a pet perhaps? P pet? What is this all about? I mean it literally. If I had to exaggerate a little. A slave? A living toy? That's preposterous. Hey, as long as you have a good master, you can undoubtedly live carefree and without worry, pampered like a prince. What's wrong with that? <laughs> okay. Schrödinger had discreetly squeezed herself within their company and now gazes disdainful with an unremitting ice cold stare at the pretentious expression on Plank's face. Teacher, I have something to say, but I don't know whether I should say it or not. Huh. Here comes my wet blanket Schrödinger, who can only ever speak ill of things. Thank you for your compliment, teacher. But I think for you to say those things in a country whose foundations were rebuilt by Lincoln, it is grossly in inappropriate. <laughs> I knew there was never going to be any fun coming from your mouth. <laughs> Alright. That is something. Okay. We did two chapters again. Interesting. Two chapters just like this. They really flew by this time. And it's, I think it's really getting more and more interesting. And I love the characters and how they interact. It's so amazing. I love their pers personalities. Like everyone has a different personality and it's, it's, so intricate and I really love it. I think it's really interesting how Plank mixes three languages. <laughs> I don't know how it is in the original, but I think it is, has definitely a reason that the languages get swapped a lot during her speaking, right? <laughs> and I love her character. She's really the Onesan type, right? <laughs> love that. I hope you guys had just as much fun as I had. And if you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It would really make my day. And I really hope to see you guys when we take a look at the next two chapters. <laughs> so, I hope to see you then.